Hi, we're going to talk about how to solve polynomial equations. So polynomial equations, if you look at the word polynomial, the word prefix or the prefix poly means many. And the last part, nomial, means terms. So a polynomial equation is an equation that has many terms. So we talked about linear equations. We talked about quadratic equations. And so now those are, ex those are equations that had a high exponent of 1, a high exponent of 2, but now we start talking about equations that have higher exponents of 2, like 3 and 4 and 5 and so forth. We group them into what's called polynomial equations. And so we're going to look at specifically how to solve polynomial equations by factoring. And in order to solve polynomial equations by factoring, just like when we solve quadratic equations by factoring, we had to use the zero product property, which was the property that says if you're multiplying two things and they give you zero, then you know that one of those things have to be zero. So either A is zero or B is zero. And so if we have more than two factors, so say three factors, A times B times C, if we know that three things multiply to give you zero, then also one of those has to be zero. So either A is zero, B is zero, or C is zero. So regardless of how many factors you have, if they multiply to give you zero, then you take each one of those factors and set it equal to zero. And so that's how we're going to solve polynomial equations by factor. So let's jump in and look at some examples. So for example one, we want to solve negative 3x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 6 squared equals 0. So this is a polynomial equation. There are many terms. Actually, if you was to multiply this out, there's 1, 2, and this counts as 2x's. There's 4x's, so this would be a fourth degree polynomial. Um, and the goal is to factor the polynomial. And for this one, the polynomial is already factored, so it makes our job a little bit easier here. So we have three things that multiply to give you zero. Negative 3x, 2x minus 1, and x plus 6 squared. So since we know that we have three things to give you zero, that multiply to give you zero, then one of those has to be zero. So what you want to do is take each one and set it equal to zero. And essentially you're creating, creating three separate equations. And you want to solve each of those equations. So if I solve this for x, I need to get rid of the negative 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And I get x equal to 0. So that's one answer. This one I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I get 2x equal to 1. And then I'm going to divide by 2. So I get x equal to 1 half. That's another answer. And then for this one, I have to get rid of the square. So to get rid of a square, you have to take the square root. So you take the square root of both sides. And remember, whenever you take the square root, you take the positive or negative square root. But positive or negative square root of 0 is still just 0. So on the left side, the square and the square root cancel. And on the right side, you get 0. Now solve for x. So get rid of the 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides. And you get x equal to negative 6. So you get three different answers, and we got those answers by taking each factor and setting it equal to zero, and that's because we have zero over here on the right side of the equation. And once you solve each of those for x, those are your three answers. Example two, we're going to solve 4x to the third plus 12x squared minus 9x minus 27 equals zero. This is also a polynomial equation. This is a third degree polynomial on the left side over here. That means the highest exponent is three. And so we want to first factor. So in the last one, we didn't have to factor. It was already factored. But this one, we have to factor first. And so there are four terms. And so whenever there's four terms, you can try to factor by grouping. So we're actually going to go through this, and we're going to go through the steps of factoring by grouping. So the first step to factoring by grouping is to, factor the, is to group the first two terms together and group the last two terms together. So that looks like this. And grouping means you just put it in parentheses together. So I'm going to group the first two terms together. And then since this minus is in front of this 9, it stays with this 9. And then I put a plus in between the parentheses. So that's step one. Group the first two terms together and group the second two terms together. Step two is I want to find the GCF in both sets of parentheses. So find the greatest common factor in the first group and in the second group, and then pull both of those out. So what do both of these have in common? So number-wise, they both have a 4 in common. And then if you look at the variables, they both have an x squared in common. 
So if you pull out a 4x squared, you need to figure out what's left inside the parentheses. So if I take a 4x squared out of here, what am I left with? So if you really don't know how to figure that out, essentially, and I'm writing this, it's not correct the way I'm writing it, but I'm just showing you what you're doing. You're dividing out a 4x squared. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and x to the third divided by x to the second is x to the first. Whenever you divide, you subtract the exponent. So when you divide things that have the same base with different exponents, you subtract the exponent. So that becomes x to the first. And if you pull out a 4x squared here, if you divide that out, you're left with a 3, and the x squared is cancel. So you're left with x plus 3 inside the parentheses. So now what do these two have in common? They both have a 9 in them, a factor of 9, but they also both have a negative. So you could pull out a minus 9. If you divide a negative 9, what are you left with? You're left with an x here, and you're left with a plus 3 here. And the whole goal to factor by grouping is to get these inside of these parentheses the same. So for that second step, we pulled out a GCF out of both terms. Now, for the third step, what you want to do is you want to pull out a GCF of the two remaining terms. So there are two terms left, this term and this term. And you want to look and see what do these two have in common. Well, they both have an x plus 3 in common. So if you pull out an x plus 3 out of here, you're left with a 4x squared. And if you pull out the x plus 3 here, you're left with the minus 9. So if we take that out, and we take that out, we're left with 4x squared minus 9. And so we've correctly factored this polynomial using factor by grouping. Now, are we finished? No, we're not finished because we have to solve for x. And solving for x involves taking both of your factors now and setting them equal to 0. So you have x plus 3 equal to 0 and 4x squared minus 9 equal to 0. Solve both of those for x. So subtract 3 from both sides, and you get x equal to negative 3. So that's one answer. And then over here, you want to add 9 to both sides. You get 4x squared equal to 9. Divide by the 4. And you get, and I'm going to come over here in this little space, you get x squared equal to 9 fourths. And you have to get rid of the square. And in order to get rid of the square, you have to take the square root of both sides. And remember, whenever you square root, you have to take the positive and negative square root. So take the square root here and the square root here. And you take the positive and negative square root. So x is equal to plus or minus square root of 9 over 4. And you can break up a square root if it's division or multiplication. So that would be the same as the square root of 9 over the square root of 4. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So that gives you two additional answers, positive 3 halves and negative 3 halves. So you end up with three answers, negative 3, x equal to negative 3, x equal to negative 3 halves, and x equal to positive 3 halves. And so that's how you solve that polynomial equation. OK, now it's your turn to try this equation. So see if you can solve 75y to the third plus 100y squared minus 3y minus 4 equals 0. So pause the video for a moment, work it out, and let's see what you get. Okay, so there's also four terms here, so you have to try to solve it by factoring by grouping. So you want to group the first two terms together, and you want to group the last two terms together. Remember this minus is with this 3, so you stick it off in there with the 3. And then you want to pull out the GCF in each group. So what do these two have in common? These both have a 25y squared in common. You pull out a 25y squared, and you're left with a 3y plus 4. What do these two have in common? They don't have a number in common, but they both have a negative. So you pull out a negative, and that leaves you with the 3y plus 4. So that negative changes the sign of both of those when you pull it out. So then both of these have a 3y plus 4 in common. And that leaves you with the 25y squared. And you can't just put nothing right there. You have to put 1 right here. So there's an understood 1 right there. So you will put a 1 in its place. So now you have two things that multiply to give you 0. So you want to take each of those factors and set them equal to 0. So 3y plus 4 equals 0. 
and 25y squared minus 1 equals 0. And solve each factor or solve each equation for y. Subtract 4 from both sides. You get 3y equal negative 4. And then divide by 3. You get y equal to negative 4 thirds. Alrighty. Over here, add 1 to both sides. You get 25y squared equal to 1. Divide by 25. You get y squared equal to 1 over 25. And so now you want to take the square root of both sides in order to get rid of the square. But remember, whenever you take the square root, you have to take the plus or minus square root. So you get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over 25. Now, I'm going to move up here in my little space. The square root of a quotient is the same as the quotient of the square root, meaning I can divide that up. That's the same as the square root of 1 over the square root of 25. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 25 is 5. So that gives me two additional answers. So my three answers are y equal to negative 4 thirds, y equal to positive 1 fifth, and y equal to negative 1 fifth. Did you get it right? Hopefully you got it right. Um, there's a lot of steps involved. So make sure if you have any questions, you put them in the comments below. Um, other than that, you are ready to move on to the next type of equation, which is solving rational equations. So make sure you check that video out. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the bell. Until the next time, I will see you later. Thanks for tuning in.